I'm trying to get a hold of the Disney people at the moment because I want to do a lecture series on Pinocchio because I think Pinocchio is brilliant work of art. Um, and if you're a puppet and an actor, and Pinocchio is both at times in that movie, both a puppet and an actor, so why an actor? Like, why is there, why is there something wrong with being an actor? Well, the first question is, well, who sets your role? And then the second question is, who's pulling your strings? So you've put on this front that is there to make you popular and sexy and desirable and to mask from yourself your own inadequacies. But that's a role. Well, who wrote it? And for what purpose? And so Jung said, for example, that we all acted out a myth, whether we knew it or not. And you know, maybe you're acting out a tragedy. Maybe you're acting out Narcissus. You don't know because you've put that you've put that on yourself in an attempt in some ways to deliver to people what they want or more accurately to look as though you're delivering to people what they want and it's not nothing to do that right because at least you're attempting in some sense to adapt to the social world someone who's really infantile and dependent someone who's never left home part of their problem is that they haven't crafted a persona so you don't want to denigrate it entirely but it's no substitute for the real thing. And it turns out that not only is what we want from each other the real thing, but that's also the adventure of your life. And so if you aren't truthful, and that means, unfortunately, especially at the beginning, when you start to be truthful, it means deeply coming to terms with your inadequacies in humility. So it's very painful. Without that, you don't have the adventure of your life. You have the role that has been that you've acquiesced to. And that'll take all the meaning out of your life. So when I was doing my clinical work, which I, I did a lot of career work with my clients, both at a beginner level, I would say, like really a beginner level with people who had no employment whatsoever, no history of employment, who were undereducated and who lacked every skill you could possibly imagine. So these are people who were really in dire straits up to people who were operating at the top of their profession, but who could still strategize forward. And so, for example, let's say you're at a dead end in your job. Okay, so I don't find my work meaningful. All right, so that's a problem statement. It's like, well, why not? I find the work I do repetitive and boring and without spirit. I have a bad relationship or a neutral relationship with my boss who doesn't know who I am. Um, I have problems with co-workers. All of that needs to be differentiated, right, and analyzed in detail. So we might say, for example, let's say you believe that you're undervalued at work, and maybe you are. What you need to do is you have something to say, and we would have to figure out what it is that you have to say. But it would be some variant of, I'm bringing more value to the table than I'm being compensated for, and that's demoralizing me. And it's also not good for you, you being my boss, because if I'm actually more valuable than is being recognized, then the fact that you're not valuing me properly means that I will become demoralized, I won't work properly, and you won't get the best out of me. So it's bad for both of us. And if your boss is in principle not amenable to such a discussion, then what you should seriously consider doing is finding another job. Okay, so let's say we're gonna set you up for this. Okay, this isn't like next week's enterprise, man. This is your life. So the first thing I would ask is, well, do you have your resume or CV in order? Well, I haven't typed it up for three years. Well, what do you think about bringing it up? Well, I'm pretty nervous about that because there's some holes in it. And, you know, I didn't do so well in college and I'm kind of embarrassed about my resume. It's like, okay, bring it in. Let's go through it. Let's, let's, Let's at least update it. Let's look where the holes are. Let's look at where the inadequacies are as far as you're concerned, right? This isn't my judgment, it's your judgment. Let's walk through those judgments and see if they're warranted because maybe you're just too guilty and ashamed and self-conscious and anxious and you're not, you're looking at your resume more critically than someone else would. And maybe there's some holes that you need to rectify. You know, you're, you're at, you're, you were two courses away from your BA and you dropped out or something like that. Well, 
Maybe we need six months to address that. And at least, even if you can't be fully educated, you could be taking some courses online. And so when you went to a new job interview and they said, what about this hole? You'd say, well, I, I came to terms with that six months ago and in an effort to rectify it, I'm taking the following courses and here's my plan for completion. That's a really good answer. And anyone with any sense who's interviewing will accept that as an indication that although you're not perfect and who is that you have a good plan and that you've thought it through. Like that's the kind of answer that in all likelihood will cement your candidacy for the position. Okay, so now you're gonna go to your boss. Well, you have to have your CV and your resume in order and you have to be able to stand on it solidly and which at least means that you're prepared to address the inadequacies in a credible, realistic, believable and truthful manner. All right, now what you do is apply for like 10 jobs. You don't have to take them, but maybe you have to go to an interview or two or three or four. And maybe there's a bunch of opportunities out there for you that you didn't even know about. And maybe someone offers you a job. And so now, now you can go to your boss and say, here's the situation I'm in here at work. Um, here's my evaluation of the problems in relationship to me. Here's what I could do for you if you gave me a 40% raise and the opportunity to progress, but I'd like to see a plan for that. And um, I've been looking for other opportunities before conducting this discussion, and I have some. Mm. Well, then, if your boss treats you with contempt at that point and doesn't listen, then perhaps he or she is a little more narcissistic than might be optimal, and it's time to find a new job. But this isn't something you do trivially. and. So when you're doubtful, say you're trapped, you ask yourself, well, why am I trapped? And that's a hard question, right? Because some of it's your own inadequacy, a lot of it, and all of the part of it that you can deal with is your own inadequacy. So even if it's unfair, you know, even if you're hemmed in for any number of reasons, inappropriate, like ethnically predicated oppression, let's say, or maybe you live it, you're in a, a workplace that really is sexist in some fundamental sense. Well, that's not good. It's not just, it's not fair, it's, it's not meritorious, all of those things. Man, maybe you shouldn't be there, but what you can do to begin with is every bloody thing you possibly can do to put yourself in the most virtuous and powerful negotiating position possible. And you have to think like a snake in some sense, to do that, you got to get the details right. You have to be prepared to bite and, and you have to have your eyes on the prize, so to speak. If you want to know something about yourself, sit on your bed one night and say to yourself, you got to mean this, like you got to be desperate. This is no game, this. It's like, my life is not everything I want it to be. And perhaps it's not everything that I need it to be. And by need, I mean, my life is so unbearable that the suffering that's attendant upon that is make me nihilistic, cynical, bitter, resentful, homicidal, genocidal, and unable to have a good relationship, pro prone to punish people for their virtues because of my jealousy, uh, driving the proclivity to see evil everywhere except within my own heart. Like, these are problems, man. And you ask yourself, you sit on the bed and say, okay, man, I'm ready to learn something. Like, what, what's one thing I'm doing wrong that I know I'm doing wrong that I could fix that I would fix? It's like, you meditate on that, you'll get an answer. And it won't be one you want, but it'll be the necessary one. You know, and it, it's often something that will point you to small things. So Carl Jung said, people in the modern world don't see God because they don't look low enough. And so imagine you're in your messy bedroom, you know, and you're sitting on the edge of the bed trying to have an honest dialogue with yourself. And the little voice says, you know, it's pretty disgusting in here. And you think, well, I'm way above such trivial niceties as organizing my room. It's like, well, that's pride. That's arrogance. If you're above organizing what's actually yours, 
how in the world are you ever going to organize anything else? And so you get on your knees and you think, well, it's time to, you know, take a brush to the toilet. And maybe that's where you start. And so, and that works, like that works. You start making those micro improvements, like real micro improvements, real on the ground, actual micro improvements to things you know that are wrong, you'll improve unbelievably rapidly.